Hey guys, today we're going to talk about another version of three string chords. These are going to be the most complex theoretically, not as difficult to play as you might think. These are shell voicings for seventh chords. So they're three string versions of seventh chords. Uh, I'm going to try to get through this without going into a whole lot of theory because I know you guys probably just want to get started and play. However, if you are interested in theory, I'm going to do another video where I talk more in depth about that. Uh, but I'd like to just get started with the shapes, if possible. Um, what I do need you guys to know, your prerequisite, the same thing with power chords, is you gotta know the sixth string and the fifth string. You gotta know what notes those are. Otherwise, you're probably gonna get lost because I'm gonna be telling you you're gonna be playing this chord, this key, such and such. It's not gonna make a whole lot of sense to you. Anyhow, let's get started with the shapes. So, uh, like I said, your roots can be on either the fifth string or sixth string. Uh, we decide depending on what's more convenient with the chord progression that we're gonna play. So let's start with the fifth string though, because these ones are a little bit easier. You don't have to skip any strings like you do with the sixth string. Uh, three types of chords that we're gonna do, major seventh, dominant seventh, or minor seventh. So let's start with the major seventh. I'm gonna just choose F, because that's a pretty good blues key and it's a pretty common one. So let's go ahead and put, we're gonna use the second finger, actually the middle finger, is going to be our anchor point. That's going to be our root for this shape, for the fifth string shapes. Let's go ahead and put that on F, which uh, if you don't know is the eighth fret of the fifth string. So I'm putting that there. Now I'm going to go one string over and one fret back. And I'm going to put my first finger right there. That's going to put me on the seventh fret of the fifth string. And those are the two notes I have so far. Now I'm going to take my third finger and I'm going to go two strings over from the root and one fret higher than the root. It'll be one string over from the first finger and two frets higher, but if you're getting confused. So that is your major seventh shape. Dominant seventh shape is similar to that. It's gonna be one difference between those. Your third finger, instead of being two strings over and one fret higher, is gonna be two strings over on the same fret. It's gonna sound like that. So you might be able to kind of hear the blues sound of that chord. We're gonna go over a blues progression in a little bit, uh, but that dominant seven chord, very essential in the blues. All right, minor seventh. So the minor seventh is similar to the dominant seven, only difference is your first finger is one fret lower than it would be in the dominant seven. So that is one string over, two frets back from the root. seventh. So review, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh. And you want to be able to find those without having to go, okay, this is major seven, let me alter that to dominant, alter that to, you want to be able to know what those shapes look like. So if, if I were to say, find C minor seven, you just, you know, probably play it right. Uh, I missed one of the strings there, but pretend that I didn't. Or if I wanted to go D7, I could find that right away. So that's our fifth string. Sixth string, we're going to use our first finger as the root. And this time we're going to skip a string though. So it'll be the sixth string, fourth string, and third string that you're going to actually be playing. So the way that you can get around skipping is if you're playing with your fingers, you just play around it, right? So, you, you know, you can just pick with the sixth string, fourth string, and third with your fingers. If you're playing with the pick, what you can do is mute the fifth string. Just 
take the, the sixth string, the finger you have on the sixth string, and just lower it enough so where you're blocking the string where you can't really hear it. That's too high. And that's too low. So you want to experiment with it if you've never muted strings before. You want to experiment to it where you get kind of that sound. And then when you play, it's going to be not very noticeable. Oh, I do need to mention that uh, if you haven't noticed yet, you only want to play the three strings that you're pressing down on. Because if you play all of them, you know, it could sound like that. Kind of cool sounds, I guess, but it's not really what we want right now. And, and it's going to vary, like your chords are going to sound all different depending on where you play on the fretboard. So let's just keep it to, and hey, I called it three string chords, so hey, why not? Back to the shapes, major seventh. Let's do A, right? Sixth string, first finger. Um, in this case, it's A, so we'll do the fifth fret. Now we're going to go two strings over, because remember, we're skipping the fifth string, and we're going to go one fret higher. And then we're going to go three strings over, and also one fret higher than the root. So you got that. Now, that's your major seven. Let's do the dominant seven. So in this case, we're going to alter the one that we have on the fourth string. We're going to take that, we're going to go one fret lower. So you'll have root, you'll have two strings over, same fret, three strings over, one fret higher. There's your blues chord again. All right, minor seven, though, this is the last one we have. We're going to take the one that's on the third string, we're going to go one fret lower than where it is now. So all of our fingers should be on the same fret, and they should be sixth string, fourth string, and third string. That's our minor seven. So reviewing the ones that we have once again uh, from the sixth string root, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, fifth string root, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh. Okay, let's put that to use. Let's play blues in the key of A since we're already in A, why not? Okay, so you have your dominant seven chord. You can think about it like this. You can think about one, four, and five. Your chords are one, Four is going to be right next door, but we're going to use the fifth string dominant chord. And then five will be two frets higher with the fifth string dominant chord. So let's just do a blues progression. I'm not going to go into depth on the blues progression because I'll do a different video on that and I want to stay with the shell voicings that we're working on right now. I'm switching from the 6th string A to the 5th string D. Now the 5th string E. 5th string D and 6th string A. There's your blues progression, key of A, all with shell voicing versions of the 7th chord, the dominant 7th chords. Take a look at some two five ones, and that'll lead us into tune-up from Miles Davis. So these are what we call two five one chord progressions, and I'm not really going to go into depth on what that means. I'll talk about that later in a different video. Now the song that we're going to use right now includes three of these two five one chord progressions. Uh, this is what Miles Davis used in tune-up and he just chose a few of these. He chose this one right here. That's B flat. And he chose this one right here. 
C, and then he chose this one right here, which is D. So you got B flat, C, and you have D. Okay, so this is tune up. Um, I'll show you how we got here. We took the key of D, 251, right there. Key of C, 251, right there. Key of B flat, 251, right here. Okay, so we're gonna make a little bit of a change here. We're gonna say this chord doesn't really fit in with our 251 game plan. We're gonna take it out of there for right now. And uh, we're also gonna take the first ending out. We're gonna play the second ending both times. Okay, so here's what we have. We have E minor 7, A7 to D7. So if you remember our minor 7, obviously we can use uh, this shape right here, or we can use the, the fifth string position, which would be this shape, right? So then we got to find E. All right, well, I could find E way up here. It's not probably the most convenient place for me to play it. So let me see, fifth string right here. So I will make my shape right there. I'm going to put my second finger on the seventh fret, fifth string, my first finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, and my third finger on the seventh fret of the third string. And just play, of course, only the ones that are right there. And uh, that's your, your minor seven chord, right? Uh, that shape's actually going to work for all of our minor sevens that start each of our four bar phrases. Now we're going to go to the second chord of the progression, which is our dominant seven chord. Uh, so in this case, A7. Well, I could go way up to this A7 here if I wanted to, but again, really long jump, not very good voice leading. So I'm going to say, okay, well, let me use the six string version of the dominant seven. So if you recall, that was this shape right here. In this case, we're going to have first finger, six string, fifth fret, skipping the fifth string. We're going to have uh, fourth string, fifth fret with your second finger. And you're going to have third string, sixth fret with your third finger and it'll sound like this. So you have this so far. All right, so if you notice, when you make this change, the third finger stays on the same string the whole time. It just moves down one fret. And then these other two fingers will have to switch strings and frets. So it's a, it's a little bit of a change, but you have this nice little voice leading there. That's your 2-5, now you need your 1, right? So now we're going to have a major 7 chord. So what do we have here? We have D major 7. So it could go all the way up here, but again, I want to keep things a little bit closer. And so I will use the 5th string version. And go 5th string, 5th fret, 2nd finger, 4th uh, string, 4th fret, 1st finger, and third finger on the third string, sixth fret. It's your major seven shape, right? So that means the two, five, one that I start with is this. Notice my hand didn't have to move around a whole lot. And uh, it sounds nice. Nice little voice leading we have going there. All right, the cool thing about this song is you take the chord that you ended off with, this is D major seven, and you're gonna turn it into a D minor seven, which takes you into the two, five, one of the next key. So we're gonna change, all right, we already have D right here. Let's just change the shape, make this a minor seven. And the relationship of these chords is all the same. So I can do basically the same exact movement. Uh, whereas here I went from E minor seven to A seven, here I'm going from D minor 7 to G7. Same exact movement. And to C major 7. Right? So 
so that's halfway through the, the form. Now, I'm going to change C major 7 into C minor 7. Same exact thing that we did here. We're just going to do it a little bit lower. All right, so I'm using my minor 7 shape on the 5th string root, 3rd fret. Then I'm going to go to F7, with the 6th string root on the 1st fret, and my B flat major 7 with the 5th string root on the 1st fret. So all together I had this. up by going back to my first 251 which started on E minor E minor A7 D major 7 so since we're skipping the first ending that's that's where we're going directly to this one right here so that's your whole form it's not gonna sound that much different it's not a hundred percent accurate but it's a little bit easier to see the relationship of the 251s if we do the second ending instead of the first ending. Miles Davis, there's a 2-5-1 chord progression, there's your shell voicings. You have literally everything you ever need to know about jazz. Not really, but you have a starting point. And if you look at pretty much any jazz tunes that you'll see, uh, you're going to see a lot of this type of stuff. So you can work your way through pretty much most of the songs with just this much knowledge. I mean, if you see uh, some of the extensions you can just cut those out and and forget about them like if you see a flat nine or something like that just ignore it just play the the basic part of the chord so that's the lesson for today uh, if you do want to stick around I can go over a little bit of the theory parts for it if you're interested in that type of stuff if you are bored by that type of stuff uh, you're excused so I will see you next time